Can we go back to the faith issue? Uh, did you have some comments to make on faith? I mean, some people are preaching, uh, no, 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 don't have faith of any kind. I mean, what, what say you? My own view is that faith is indispensable. I'm not talking about specifically religious faith, but I mean, I, I think uh, the view of R. M. Roth, for instance, is epistemism, uh, the view that one can live a life that is devoid of any faith commitments. I, I, that strikes me as an absurdity. I think that everybody has faith commitments at the, at the bottom of, uh, of what everybody's worldview. Okay, but let, let me stop you right there. You said everyone sure. has faith commitments. What does that mean? Sure. Well, I, I think that there are things that we believe uh, that we cannot justify, that we, that are not warranted. They're not warranted by experience. Um, they're not. They're not warranted by by evidence. We just we just believe them. I think we believe them as a part of the kind of critters that we are, as a kind of animal inheritance. Um, uh, for instance, we we believe in a world. That is external to our minds. I think everyone believes this. I don't believe that. I don't believe that, that, that there really are idealists out there. Idealism is an interesting speculation, uh, but I don't think there any anybody out there is actually a genuine idealist. I've never met one, but um, although there are some people that can put forward a, an interesting case for it. Um, similarly, solipsism, the idea that the entire world is in my mind and that there are no other minds out there, that I'm the only one in existence, that is a, a, a view that would be hard to. Uh, dispel because every fact in existence is consistent with it. So every fact in, in existence is consistent with idealism um, or physicalism. Every fact in existence uh, that, we, that we're aware of is consistent with solipsism, for instance. Um, uh, so we, we believe in uh, other minds, but there's no, there's no evidence that would uh, uh, eliminate the other alternative. That you are the only mind in existence. Um, there is no uh, piece of data that would conclusively establish that physicalism is true, and that the ultimate ontology of reality is not mind-like. Uh, there, um, we all trust in induction. For instance, the future will resemble the past in relevant respects. Um, we, we believe in the uniformity of nature, uh, but that is not something that we can establish to be the case. These are all faith commitments, right? We, we. Right. I just believe these things, um, and we, no one even had to teach us these things, right? My dog thinks this way. Um, and uh, so these are not inclusions born of experience and evidence and products of reason. Rather, I think that these are the kinds of things that are uh, pickled into or rather wired into our minds, our animal minds, um, and they form the basis of the grounding of rationality. You can't, can't repudiate these things without seeming a little bit crazy, um, which is why as soon as someone calls them into question, you start to wonder just how serious are they? Are they, are they just being crazy? But in fact, there isn't a test. There's no, there's no experiment that you can conduct that could vitiate these other um, hypotheses, no matter how wildly speculative they may seem. So... I think that everyone has faith commitments, and I've listed three, but I could list a dozen just off the top of my head besides that. Um, and uh, in fact, I did a video about this many, many years ago um, on what are called in some quarters properly basic beliefs uh, and whether or not you believe or whether you're, you're comfortable with the concept of proper basicality. I know that Stephen is not comfortable with it, uh, but, but, but I am. But in any case, I think um, Stephen would agree that there are, there are things that we accept as true that we just we just didn't learn them. Um, they may be wired into us, and that we all take them for granted. They are our our uh, presuppositions, and uh, all of our actions are predicated on these kinds of assumptions. You can call them into question. It's not that they're not dubitable. It's not that they're indubitable. It's that I think that um, they are incorrigible. We have no way of revising them. We have no way of repudiating them or testing them. Um, so it's not that we're that, that they are inerrant. Uh, it's just that they're irrevisable and incorrigible. Um, and that so there there is a class of beliefs that I think we all hold that are kind of weird this way. They're 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 outside ordinary mundane beliefs which are corrigible, which are revisable, which are subject to evidence and scrutiny and evaluation. But I think at the heart of all rationality, there's a set of beliefs, a set of assumptions that get the ball rolling, that are not themselves subject to, to uh, empirical testing. And so I think at the heart of rationality itself is a, 
is a set of faith commitments. And I think it behooves people who see themselves as rational and skeptics and critical thinkers to acknowledge the limits of our epistemology, the limits of what we can know and what and 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 what uh, what we have come to know, uh, and what we don't in fact know, and where we are in fact just operating on enabling assumptions. So I, I think that there are faith commitments at the at the bottom of everything. The, the caution here, though, is is this: when people hear me say this, they think that I'm somehow suggesting that that everyone has a license to believe any old damn thing on insufficient evidence, and that doesn't follow. It doesn't follow that because there are some things at the bottom of the way that we think that um, cannot be supported by evidence or argued empirically, that therefore you have a license to believe any old thing. That, that simply doesn't follow. That is a non sequitur. It is actually by virtue of believing certain kinds of things, certain having certain assumptions that are fundamental to rationality, that we are then able to go about our business and say, that doesn't make sense. There's no evidence for that. Here there is evidence for that, and, and we can scale our confidence accordingly. Right, right. So, okay. Based upon what you just said, and I'd like to hear something very clear and concise concerning this, why are so many advocates of reason within the atheistic community, why are they turning to apistivism? Well, I don't know that so many are. <laughs> Uh, I think some are. There are a few vocal uh, proponents of it. You know, Bionic Dance is one, and Arn Ra is another. Uh, and I think that they're attracted to it because it seems, uh, first of all, it's quick and dirty. It seems easy. And I think it's self-congratulatory. It makes them feel like they've got a, a kind of epistemological high ground. You know, they can boast that, well, none of my beliefs are irrational. They're all warranted by evidence. But I think that you can only think that about your epistemological uh, system if you haven't examined it very carefully. I think you, if you examine it, you scrutinize it um, uh, more than just superficially, you will see that there are things that you do not know how to uh, defend and warrant on the basis of evidence. Uh, so I think that the, the appeal of it is that a lot of uh, people in the skeptical rationalist movement like to think that they live in the kingdom of reason. And the faith heads out there um, are just living in some kind of a, a, a land of stupidity where they don't know how to reason. Uh, I'd like to say that a lot of people in, in sort of the in, in religious communities like to think that they live in the in the kingdom of morality and that they have they they they, they have uh, control over uh, morality and moral discourse. And a lot of people in the atheist and skeptical community like to think that they live in the kingdom of reason. And uh, that uh, that is their particular province, but I think that's self-congratulatory. So I think the the, the, the appeal for this is primarily um, egoistic. It's it's just a kind of self-congratulation, and it's a mistake. And I think it's born of not examining your epistemological assumptions very carefully. You know, theists are nothing more than. A group of children trying to understand the world around them, grasping for something beyond what they're able to learn from science 